For what will likely be the last time, President Trump and Prime Minister Theresa May stood together as heads of government. The two have had their differences over the years, but on Tuesday, Mr. Trump saved his most pointed attacks for London Mayor Sadiq Khan. He's a negative force, not a positive force. And I think he should actually focus on his job. It'd be a lot better if he did that. He could straighten out some of the problems that he has and probably some of the problems that he's caused. Mainstream. Throughout the presidential visit, Khan has it minced words. Donald Trump is the poster boy for the far-right uh, movement. I think in years to come, by the way, uh, we're going to regret uh, giving this state visit to uh, Donald Trump. And what sort of message does it send to friends uh, in Hungary, in Italy, in France and elsewhere, and all around the Western world, where they've seen a rise of nativist populist movements. Meanwhile, May pushed back on the president. She defended her handling of Brexit, which Mr. Trump has repeatedly criticized. Um, and I seem to remember the, the president suggested that I sued the European Union, which uh, we didn't do. We went into negotiations and we came out with a good deal. Yeah, that's not such a I would have sued, but that's OK. <laughs> I would have sued and settled, maybe, but you never know. She's probably a better negotiator than I am, Jared. The president also took jabs at Labor Party leader Jeremy Corbyn. Last night, the lawmaker boycotted the state dinner honoring Mr. Trump. Today, Corbyn joined an anti-Trump rally. So I say to our visitors that have arrived this week, think on, please, about a world that is one of peace and disarmament, is one of recognizing the values of all people, is a world that defeats racism, defeats misogyny, defeats the religious hatreds that are being fueled by the far right in politics, in Britain, in Europe and the United States. In central London, thousands of protesters marched down closed off streets. They gathered in a square just blocks from the president. The throngs made plenty of noise, but Mr. Trump said he couldn't find them. I said, where are the protests? I don't see any protests. I did see a small protest today when I came, very small. So a lot of it is fake news, I hate to say. The president also weighed in on pressing issues back in the U.S. He defended his plan to impose tariffs on Mexico over immigration. Mexico shouldn't allow millions of people to try and enter our country, and they could stop it very quickly. And I think they will. And if they won't, we're going to put tariffs. He also talked about the UK's use of advanced telecommunication networks known as 5G. England is using equipment from the giant Chinese tech firm Huawei. The United States is concerned that it's too close to the government and that Beijing could use Huawei equipment for spying. The White House has said it might curtail its intelligence sharing with the UK if it sticks with the company. But today, Trump walked that threat back. Because we're going to have absolutely an agreement on Huawei and everything else. We have an incredible intelligence relationship, and we will be able to work out any differences. After the press conference, the president and first lady returned to the U.S. ambassador's residence. But they weren't alone for long. Nigel Farage was spotted on his way to meet the president. He is one of the controversial driving forces behind Brexit and the leader of the party by the same name. Before arriving in London, Trump praised Farage and fellow Brexit supporter Boris Johnson. Uh, Nigel Farage is a friend of mine. Boris is a friend of mine. They're two very good guys, very interesting people. Uh, Nigel's had a big victory. He's picked up 32 percent of the vote, starting from nothing. Their meeting was private, but it's a sign that Mr. Trump is already thinking beyond Theresa May. And by the end of two days of pomp and protest, London also seemed to be moving on. And Yamish joins me now from London. So, Yamish, how has President Trump navigated this, this state visit? And, and tell me about his meetings with Prime Minister May as she prepares to step down as a leader of her party. Well, he's had a really raucous visit to the United Kingdom ever since the beginning. Before he even landed, he was insulting the mayor of London, calling him a stone-cold loser. He also took aim at Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, and a member of the royal family. He said that she was nasty because she called him a misogynist in 2016. He did seem to pivot and start to enjoy the pageantry of Buckingham Palace, spending time with the Queen. And today was really about politics and policy. He met with Theresa May and talked about a possible UK-US trade deal. He said he wants to iron out those details. He was also meeting with supporters of Brexit. So I think he was really trying to mesh both his brash brand of politics with also his role as a statesman. So we've seen these large anti-Trump protests uh, in London uh, since, 
since he arrived. What sense do you have of the public's reaction to him uh, and this visit? Well, emotions have really been running high here in London ever since President landed here. Um, the most vocal people who were reacting to President Trump were reacting negatively. I heard from a number of people who say that they, they think President Trump is racist. Some people told me they see him as a global symbol of far-right extremism. But I should say there were people with Make America Great hats saying that the president's misunderstood. They said he should also get credit for being supportive of Brexit before the U.K. decided to leave the EU. So in some ways, he really had people riled up here in London as he always does when he's when he's around the world and different subject Yamish but while in London the president today doubled down on his threat to impose tariffs on Mexico and he had a message for members of his own party the Republicans if they tried to block that the president said if Republicans on Capitol Hill try to block the tariffs that he wants to impose on Mexico, that they would be foolish. He said he has high approval ratings with Republicans and thinks he knows best about how to deal with Mexico and immigration. But it is important to note that Republican lawmakers had a meeting on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. with White House officials, and they said that they wanted to send a message to the White House. And that message was, if it comes to that, we think we have the votes necessary in both the House and the Senate to block these tariffs. So it's a rare rift between the president and his party, and we're going to have to see how it plays out. Rare for sure. All right, Yamish, uh, continuing to report on President Trump's visit. Thank you. Thanks, Judy.